Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are blessed and privileged to have our guest. She is called the singing violin. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Yes, she is Kala Ramnath, who's an Indian classical violinist and belongs to the Mevati Gharana, a lineage of musicians. She was awarded the Sangeet Natak Academy Puraskar, Rashtra Kumar Gandharva Samman, and the Pandit Jisraj Gaurav Puraskar. Not only in India, but she's famous worldwide. Her compositions have appeared on the Grammy, Hollywood movies, and she's composed and collaborated with some of the best musicians worldwide. She's the first ever Indian violinist to be featured in the Violin Bible, the Strat. started learning because of the bribe that was given to her by her gra- grandfather and um, this became candy and sweets for the entire population who listens to her how when did you recognize and realize that this is what you want to do uh, so i started when i was very young two and a half years of age i was introduced to music and the violin and um, i mean in the beginning my grandfather would bribe me <laughs> and but when i was 7 years old there was this channel called vivid bharati in all india radio yes we all know that <laughs> so they would have these uh, little uh, slots in their timings like 7:30 to 7:45 3:15 in the afternoon to 3:45 they'd have these little uh, classical music uh, sessions and they'd play the music of all the greats in indian classical music so uh, when i used to listen to kishori amankar ji and pandit jasrat ji listening to their recordings of uh, shuddha sarang and uh, bhimbalas and uh, kishori ji's uh, bhopali bageshri i would hear that and you know i i would feel if music was so beautiful then this is what i want to do a beautiful Since you mentioned Pandit Jasrat ji oh my god and you collaborated with him in the sense you associated with him my god that must have been the feeling to the highest level but tell us something about it so when i was about 12 years old my uh, aunt who is a very famous violinist dr shrimati n rajam she decided to introduce me to the audiences my grandfather felt i was ready for it you must be so the first concert of mine was arranged by pandit jasrat ji himself wow so you know i he did, he got he got the concert arranged and i performed and at that time i wasn't learning from him but uh, yeah he has been witness to my practice getting yelled at and then <laughs> taking me out and then uh, advising me and buying me chocolates and ice cream <laughs> and <laughs> how cute being basically he would pamper me yeah a dream for so many people and you yeah. grew up with him how beautiful Yeah. So this trip of yours to the US I know you had a concert at the Royal Albert, Royal Albert Hall and many other you have been traveling around the world London US what is this all about So I live part of the time in California 
right now where we are talking yes and uh, last month i was in july i was in the uk and uh, i i it's royal albert hall's 150th anniversary or something and so they had this concert uh, arranged with an organization uh, uh, saudha which is all about poetry they they uh, you know they have poets coming in so along with that organization they had organized this concert where they had frida kahlo's paintings the mexican wow yes gorgeous and they had me interpret her paintings through music here they had pictures of her painting and uh, i was interpreting that through music amazing see the world music has no language yeah. art has uh, collaboration with everything and yeah. that that is what you are taking ahead the culture and the art from india how do people see and appreciate the americans the uh, you know the international people when they listen to something which is so different so basically uh if, i mean when i talk about uh musicians and the audience uh musicians of different genres have great respect for our music i would say more than more. it is in india mm-hmm. for our classical music i don't know if you know that this is the oldest form of music in the world violin no indian music indian music yes it's the oldest form of music in the world and nothing has been written down it's been passed on from generation to generation it's evolved and you know the uh, hist- uh, i mean past history of what happened to our country we had dictators who didn't i mean uh, kings and emperors who did not like music who did not like art who tried to kill it but still it is alive today it's giving me goosebumps and so there must be something in this music which has uh, which has made it evolve taking in all the like when the persians came into india we have you know the amalgamation of that music in indian music but still this is st- it still was called indian music it was not called persian music exactly so, beautiful very so, beautifully so it's still indian music everything whatever uh, you know however it evolved with the passage of time and whatever happened and today still it is indian music and it is still alive that means there is something to this and it Absolutely. is really, uh, developed as far as uh, rhythm and the melody is concerned in music because mu- music is all about melody and rhythm and it's very highly developed than any other form of music in the world so so uh, western or i would say musicians from every genre who are not uh, ex- uh, they all appreciate our music a lot they have great respect for our music and the audiences the non indian audiences the indian audiences obviously know a bit of our music so i'm not including them here but the non indian audiences wherever i have gone has always been receptive to our music and have always come and told me that you know it has made them emotional it has touched them uh, you know it gave them goosebumps you know things like that so it has always had an effect on the audiences which means it's very powerful very powerful it in, yeah. it involves all the senses Yes. And when all the senses are involved your internal internal. Yes. So Amazing. they have experienced they've all had experiences and they have come and spoken to me. I mean even at the Royal Albert Hall I had so many people come and speak to me after the concert. 
thoughts. And, and you have had so many collaborations. It is not only with Indian people, with across the globe. Yeah. Please show, uh, throw some highlight on those collaborations. So the first collaboration I had was with, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, there was a group called The Doors, very famous Western rock group. There's a group called The Doors. Jim Morrison was the singer. Mm-hmm. And uh, so one of the founder members of The Doors, Ray Manzarek, he used to play the keys, keyboards. So uh, my first collaboration was with him in LA. This was like, I would say, uh, 27 years ago. Wow. So it started there and then after that, I worked with jazz music. I worked with flamenco. I worked with Celtic music. I worked with uh, Americana music here, which is, uh, what's that called? Country music. Yeah, and then uh, I I also worked with Persian musicians, Iranian. I mean that's Persian music. So yeah, so uh, Eastern European. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, gypsies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I worked with them. Norwegian. Yeah, so I have worked with a lot of genres, Afro jazz. Yeah, jazz here. So I've done a lot of these collaborations and uh, and also with uh, music uh, composed by, uh, for uh, Hollywood films. Ah, yes. I've done that also. So yeah, it's a varied, uh, what what do I say? Experiences and exposures. Yeah. And collaborations. Yeah, with all these genres. Beautiful. So why violin, Kala? Why, or did you even ever think of any other instrument? Uh, violin, because violin was in my family, <laughs> and seventh uh, generation. Yeah, so the, I was taught this, so I couldn't. I I picked. I started with the violin, and then uh, no other instrument because a a violin is complete on its own. It can do everything that a voice can do and it can do what the instrument by itself can do. So if I, I could do what a sitar player could do, can do on this instrument. Hmm. I can also do what a vocalist can do, whereas a sitar player or a flute player, all of them I cannot do in, totality of what a vocalist can do. Like what? If you could just give an example. So for example, a sitar player has limitations with uh, when he strums the string, there is a, a certain amount of, uh, what do you say, there is no continuity in the, in the tone because it cuts off after some time because it's a plucked instrument. Or maybe the vibrations. The vibration, you pluck an instrument, the vibration lasts for some time and then tapers off. Correct. It doesn't keep going, like in a voice. Uh Aha. I can stop the voice when I want. You can stop the voice when you want, but you have the breath, so... You You can go on also in the same space for long. Yes. I got it. That is possible to a certain extent in the flute, but certain techniques of of singing, like something which is called tan, that is difficult to express on the flute. That sound of that uh, to bring in that ex- exact exact reproduction of the sound of how tan sounds to us is very difficult on a flute. Very interesting. But in violin, it's very easy. I can create the same sound, whether it be ala, whether it be tan, whatever. So were so, you taught this or you figured it out on your own, listening to it? 
to a certain extent i was taught this but uh, later on i figured out more on my own like uh, when i went to pandit jasraj and i started learning from him then i figured out more so all this beautiful experiences with this but why singing violin why have you been given this title uh i guess because i i take the instrument so close to the voice and it sometimes sounds like somebody singing especially when i was playing with uh, pandit jasraj ji when you and i used to accompany him people would think it was a, a lady singing behind him wow this full yeah so then they started calling my instrument the singing violin <laughs> so is it anybody particularly you who gave you this name i have no idea i don't know people started writing and uh, nice yeah, so i didn't i didn't <laughs> say anything, figure but... out what's the root root place yeah okay nice i guess it started in 96 or something 96 people started writing about this and it happened in two three places on their own so beautiful so what is uh, your uh, where do you want to, to take this kala where do do you see this art go So the first thing that I want to do is try and save what we have right now. So in the sense like since our music has never been documented I am trying to document our music uh, explaining every rag you know very good it's amazing doing that Uh, in in 4K videos because Indian music cannot be learned uh, by reading a book. Since the music is not on the notes like in Western music where you can read and play, our music is in between the notes. The notes there is a con- connection between one note and the other, and it is. it is not on the note it is in between the note because we have the microtones oh very interesting so you have to so from one note to another when you move there is these microtones at play and when you hit the microtones right that is when you have that experience that people talk about like this music did this to me this is what i felt little nuances very fine nuances between two yeah. so There's that so much. Cannot, first of all that cannot be written yeah no and, you have to experience it yeah and for that you need videos to un- listen to it which is why our music is called uh, like it it is passed on from the teacher to the disciple this is the reason because it cannot be written down yeah it has to be practical yeah you cannot and read and hear our ears become our eyes because we are listening Amazing. like to read music here you listen and play so our ears are our eyes so for that i have started a website called indianclassicalmusic.com where i started documenting all this this is one thing i want to do and the other thing i want to make violin more popular in in hindustani classical music yeah because in in uh, western classic classical music of course violin is the main instrument and even in karnatak classical music there violin has its place but in hindustani music because of uh, there are not many uh, performers and practitioners with good technique so i feel i have to make a work on making this instrument popular and in india people have got this idea oh violin only comes when there is a sad <laughs> or very romantic <laughs> uh, yeah but most of it is sad 
धुना कहीं पे होता है सो वायलिन ले आओ उधर सो सो दैट आइडिया दैट काइंड ऑफ आई वॉन्ट टू आई कॉल इट लाइक पीपल हैव अ प्री कंसीव नोशन I'd like to erase change and say that this instrument can do a lot more than what you think. Yeah. So Very interesting. Yeah. And that's why you are also training teaching. I know you're going to Boston next. I do teach and I also want to take this music to every corner of the world and make it very popular. which is why i'm making this website also so that anyone and everyone can go and understand what indian music is so are you also collaborating because if it's not written the violin it's not written for any other instrument as well yes it's not written indian music is not written at all written down at all western classical it's notated and you read it here you cannot i know one word triveni What is this? So you've heard of uh, Triveni Sangam in Allahabad, right? Where three rivers meet, and there's a confluence. So Triveni is a confluence of three musicians coming together, each representing. Uh, I mean, two musicians representing different. traditions like i play hindustani music and jayanti kumareesh ji plays carnatic music and both of us are bound by the magician ustad zakir hussain oh wow he is amazing i mean he ties us both in this uh, in the music and when we create music together so it's a confluence so the three rivers Ganga, Jamuna, Saraswati—they also say the Triveni. Yeah, they so meet together. Saraswati and uh, we are the Ganga, Jamuna. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So you guys are doing a concert soon? Yeah, and we are performing in Singapore on the 14th of August, on the eve of India's independence. Oh wow! Esplanade Hall in Singapore. and uh, yeah we're really looking forward to it and it's a sold out concert sure yes. and we had a 19 concert tour yes and then uh, before that i started the year with a concert uh, which was a world premiere of my work with the seattle symphony i composed on climate using indian rags so musically i showed how uh, the elements if there is an imbalance in the elements and everything is made up of the five elements right so if there is an imbalance in the elements like for example fire the fire element if it if it in our body if it's a, if there is a 2 degree rise in temperature we have we have fever right exactly so it, it, for the earth if there is a 2 degree rise in temperature it is disaster so an imbalance in these elements causes problems for us and imagine for the earth what it would be so you know i i in this past two years i researched and i found we have ragas for even the elements beautiful and all this is documented now right you're making it available for people to know these are medications so i i wrote a co- i wrote compositions and then we had i played it with the seattle symphony beautiful yeah so this is awesome i am just loving this journey and you are living this journey uh you are in music you are soaked in music and people who no music and they appreciate music all around you so what does kala do for getting out of this and being somebody who is not into music and just a normal life without music i, I live a very normal life i cook i go grocery shopping <laughs> i do everything i live a normal life 
and of course yeah like to the after tomorrow i have to leave so yeah i've started packing now so little stuff here and there i keep putting into my bag yeah getting ready to leave yeah so how does kala unwind uh you know i like uh, to is read to current affairs read about current affairs and i like to uh, watch movies and uh, i like to you know take a walk so you love bollywood movies yes you enjoy I do. today i want to watch darlings ha i am also watching darlings so we'll be together connected <laughs> because our family has decided this is what we are doing in the today evening that will be my fun time fun time <laughs> so tell us tell me i was in london after the concert we went for to watch a movie <laughs> oh wow so you had that plan let's finish the concert and then we'll go unwind with what so like you know when friends are there or people i know who i know very well so what should we do let's watch a movie like like that. so you're fun that way what uh, food yes. chaat chapati of course i love <laughs> with okay singing people are supposed to eat chaat i don't I, i don't sing i play the violin i sing too but it does not affect my voice mm it's different yeah. for different people for different right? i know yeah so for me all those things don't bother me so i am game for chaat any time of the day something you really crazily have it in your bucket list that you want to do one day you know i want to go and see uh what is that called the northern lights northern oh yeah that you can just go <laughs> i know it's beautiful you no know, wait it, it's always in the winter it's a better time to see it yeah winter i have to be in india for the concert season And so when the, the time is right and I, and i wish i could go and see kashmir uh it's opened up now and people can go and see kashmir yeah which is so beautiful yeah, yeah. i think that is one land that has a uh, lot of uh, us are, are deprived for so long and now so glad that the borders have opened and Do you also, i would like to go and see many places in india which i have never seen why is that is yeah, that the places in india itself why is that you haven't traveled because of the amount of commitment that your music yeah has? performances and this and that one never takes time out to go and see those places yes i think i i would like to do all that you know just take breaks and keep going and seeing i would like to do that So tell a one message to the universe to everybody who's listening to you today. Uh I just will say you know uh, live life and be happy and you know live in the moment and uh be nice and kind to everybody and always have um you know good thoughts because that translates into good actions and uh, peace and contentment comes <laughs> beautiful peace and contentment anyways comes when uh, people listen to you playing the violin the <laughs> effect it has on the five senses and i i have heard your violin and you know it just it, it's a calming it's like meditation And sometimes whatever mood you are in it just calms you so beautifully that you are like oh my god who is this magician playing it because you have that magic touch magic effect uh, on people the madas touch <laughs> thank you thank you so more yeah. power to you and a lot of a uh, lot of people who get touched by you and i'm sure you are healing a lot of people knowingly and unknowingly and let this magic touch always remain thank you fanesia i am kala ramnath and i thank you for having me in the airwaves of fanesia